And upon the blood of Caligula, there is a bitter struggle between emperors and empresses in a monstrous game of ambition, violence, and abuse of power. It is an age when men's lives are worthless, an age in which corruption and treachery become the law of existence. And Messalina, with her hatreds and her passions, is the symbol of this epoch. Sulpicius. I've been waiting a long time. This place is too dangerous for me. Well, tell me the news. Claudius. Claudius is to be the new emperor. That means our plan will be successful. Did you speak to him yet? The moment for that has not arrived. It wouldn't be prudent to reveal your name. But don't worry. You're the only noble Roman whom he does not suspect. Rome will never again have a vestal as beautiful as you. You will be the Empress, and the destiny of Rome will be in our hands. I will be here in six days at the same hour. Stay for my coronation. May all the gods grant you a happy reign, Claudius. The soldiers and the people of Rome salute you, their new emperor. wisely in accepting so heavy a charge. I know of no other hands but yours able to guide the fate of the empire. I am not deceived. The Praetorians have placed me upon the throne, but the aristocrats will try to overthrow me. Not one of them was here, and perhaps at this moment they are conspiring against me. Senate pronounced you emperor by acclamation, and it will certainly defend your rights. They can do nothing against the legions. To govern in the face of intrigues is an arduous undertaking. Don't concern yourself about it, Caesar. The aristocrats are ambitious but easily corruptible. You're late, Tribune. Claudius arrived some time ago, by the gods. I'm fearful of these emperors who are too punctual. <laughs> One talent on the tall one. Two talents on the short one. Five talents on the tall one. Ten talents on the short one. Twenty talents upon me. Taken. Taken. Take <laughs> With your permission, divine Claudius. Oh! <laughs> Hit him! Investment of good money, huh? <laughs> Come on, pay your debts. I've earned my money. There? Ah, oh, that's much better. By the gods, they were rough customers. Well, let's not <laughs> lose any time, my friends. Around us are gathering too many flowers. My opinion, you bribe them.
Marrying a member of the aristocracy would be a wise policy indeed, divine Clodius. The nobles must give way sooner or later. And one by one, they will come to court. These are the advantages. Now let's speak of the disadvantages. Who is the woman I must put up with on my side? I was thinking of Valeria. Valeria Messalina. I assure you, she is a member of one of the noblest families in Rome. She is soon to become a Vestal within a few months. But if Clodius asks for her hand... You have spoken before of this young Vestal. Who is she exactly? Uh, she's the niece of Augustus Caesar, the most beautiful woman in the Empire. The niece of Augustus Caesar? I hope she is not as boring as her illustrious ancestor. Do you know that I would never give you bad advice. Are you deciding the fate of Rome? The Emperor is going to marry Valeria Messalina. The niece of Augustus, if this is your desire, divine Claudius, may the gods grant you a peaceful life and a long reign. To the great Roman Empire and to the strong arms that defend it. I need some of those strong arms too, to defend me. Those rascals leave you all alone. May I help? <laughs> oh! You tear my peplum. It's true. Oh, let's save the peplum. Two of us will defend her too well. To say such things right here, beside the Temple of Vesta. Oh, it's sacrilege. By the way, don't you have to attend the Senate tomorrow? Is there another man who is keeping you from marrying me? No. But I would make you unhappy. And you, Vibidia, don't you have anything to say? Valeria feels highly honored by your request. You are the most powerful of all the aristocrats. But Valeria's destiny is dedicated to the goddess Vesta. As you wish, Valeria. For your sake, I can only say, I do hope you will never regret your refusal. Vestals are daughters of the gods. And only the gods can bestow power. Ambition becomes you, Valeria. To you it is a virtue. That is why I wanted you to be my wife. Come. Goddess Vesta will never give you love. And love is the only thing worth living and fighting for. <laughs> it's very foolish of you to break into the gardens of Vesta. If they catch you, they'll kill you. Go away. Perhaps it'll be worth it. What is your name? Valeria. 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 You are beautiful, Valeria. My name is Lucius Maximus. And being a soldier, I could love you as nobody else. Go away. A soldier should die in battle, not in the gardens of Vesta. When can I see you again? Valeria! In the morning. Those pine woods are deserted. <laughs> I'll be there waiting for you. offer by accepting the cloistered life of the Vestals. It is you who must choose. What if I wanted to dispose of my life in another way? It would cause you unhappiness. Remain here in this temple, Valeria. 
The cruel voices of the world do not come here, or the ambitious passions of men. No, Vibidia, I can't give up living, and I can't give up loving. And the glory that I won't have from the gods, I will have from men. I've decided. May the gods protect you. Third morning I've come to the pine woods at dawn, and there've been only the swallows there to keep me company. Did you really think that I would have come? Did you forget I was a vestal? No, but the mother of Romulus and Remus was a vestal too. Damned. Why did you come back? Because I love you, Valeria. We were only playing a game the other evening, but afterwards I realized that it's a game that can cause suffering. Go now. Go away. And tomorrow I won't make you wait so long. Very brave to defy death for a vestal. All my life I dreamed of a man who would really love me, no matter who I was. Was that man very different from me? He was you. Now let death come. about what's waiting for you in Armenia. Yes, I am. War can be rather unpleasant. Oh, Maximus, you're worried about what you're leaving behind in Rome. What is her name? Do I know her? No. Perhaps I don't know her very well either. Come along. You mustn't be so gloomy about it. Do like me and don't give it a thought. And yet I'm leaving my family in Rome, my wife and two children. And you can act so happy. Surely I'm going to find my family in Armenia. Well, how many families do you have? One in every country where I've been stationed. <laughs> Lucius, we've come to take you with us. Your friends want to celebrate your going away. No, I can't. I see what you mean. When you refuse a friend's invitation, it means you're going to meet a woman. The women where you're going don't have the charms ours do. No, it's not what you think, Jada. Uh-oh, so it's serious. Perhaps it's really serious. I'm afraid that the Armenian campaign and a hundred others won't be enough to make me forget her. Has Rome no other soldiers she can send to Armenia? It seems not. Surely you're not going to accept it without protesting. A Roman soldier would never think of opposing the wishes of his emperor. Will you wait for me? I've spent the most wonderful days of my life with you. How could I forget you? I will count the days and the hours, and every evening we will look up at the same sky.
Divine Claudius, here is the bride whom you have chosen. The gods could do nothing against your imperial. Her will. place is by my side. Perhaps fate itself has written it thus. From this day you will share with me the honors and the burden of the empire. And those who come after us will judge whether we have been worthy of such great power. Our descendants will never be able to judge us. They remember only illustrious men. They turn them into gods, as they did with Julius Caesar. Serenity of reflection is the prerogative of the world of the future. Julius Caesar has not yet been judged. Well, Claudius's bride is young and beautiful. A little too young for him, but it was a clever political move. Did you notice? There wasn't a single aristocrat. Why should they come to celebrate their own defeat? faithfully carried out, divine Messalina. The tribune Lucius Maximus is now on his way to Armenia, where I'm sure he will cover himself with glory. And where he will forget about Valeria. But when he comes back, he will love Messalina. I made you empress because of your beauty and our love. Now we will govern Rome despite Claudius and his flatterers. Claudius expects the gift of the first night, but for you, I... And the Emperor. Wait a moment. Listen to me carefully. I know you. Remember, to play games with me could be dangerous. Are you so sure that you know me? I couldn't have chosen better. You have every one of the qualities I've dreamed of. You the Emperor, or me the Empress? That's enough. Don't dare to challenge me anymore. I am your Emperor. Don't forget that. I won't forget it. <laughs> Let's drink to our love and to our power. We will make history, because history is made by courageous men. I give you the finest wine in the empire. Lucius Jetta. I was obliged to defend my honor. Don't tell Claudius until tomorrow. Because tonight is my wedding night. Listen. Listen to that plebeian scum shouting and enjoying themselves. The new Caesar has been generous with Sesterces for the celebration and honor of his bride. And then, you know, the poor like a beautiful empress. She will satisfy them with a plate of beans. Beasts. They are nothing but wild beasts. 
celebrating their own ruin. Valeria Messalina has betrayed the cause of all the nobles of Rome. Hear me, Marcellus. The cause to which we are dedicated needs your arm today. We must act now before the people proclaim the triumph of the Empress. You've been ordered to kill me, haven't you? Well, then, what are you waiting for? I know what you're thinking. That it'll be madness to kill me. What's the good of hating when you can love? There are many dangers in Rome. You are still young and inexperienced. I wouldn't want you to have any illusions about your new situation. You need an ally and a powerful friend at court. Last night that man tried to murder me. But I knew how to defend myself. Alone. I am Caesar's wife. And I intend to wield my power alone. How many times have you turned that hourglass, Caius Silius? Be patient. Marcellus is clever, strong, and courageous. But the Imperial rooms are well guarded. She's here. Messalina is here. Are the Roman aristocrats really afraid of a young, defenseless woman? Hmm? No, none of us is afraid. We are only worried about Rome. Don't be concerned. Rome is in good hands. In mine. Not one of you came to render homage to Messalina. But Messalina knows how to treat her friends. And so, I've come to see you myself. And I've... I've... brought you my gift.
smart, huh? How old are you? Seven. That's fine. What's your name? Miss Alina. By the gods, from the moment I set foot in Rome, I've heard nothing but people talking about Miss Alina. There's never been so much grain distributed as in these days. Uh -huh. And you ought to see the spectacles in the circus. Don't look for her again here. You know the law. No one may ever see her. Go, Lucius Maximus. Forget about Valeria. <laughs> Come, Messalina. I don't see you smiling, Tribune. You promised me you'd be happy when you got to Rome. I can't believe she shut herself up in the Temple of Vesta. Now stop thinking about her every moment. Come on, I give is. us a smile, Lucius. There are a thousand ways, I and all is. of them pleasant, to forget about your Valeria. Women like Valeria are never forgotten. Come on, let's go. Selena! To the health of Messalina! The Empress will live a hundred years if your invocations are sincere. Sincere as this good wine, they've broached a hundred casks tonight. Ten at the Forum, twenty at the Circus. I'm going to run and see if they're all of the same quality. Where's my donkey? Bring my donkey! Are you one of Messalina's gifts, too? No. What a shame. Messalina's having an ox roast in Never Street in Rome. What happens when the oxen give out? I will roast all the aristocrats. <laughs> Be with long legs. Oh, horrible food has given me a stomach. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say women? <laughs> Come on with us. Our wine is the best. <laughs> Samson's lost his strength along with his hair. <laughs> the wine of other countries may have ruined my inside, but not my muscle. Oh, stop it. Stop it. Hey, look at this. All Rome seems to have lost its head over Messalina. All this hubbub for a woman. Who said something against Messalina? He did. Come to Rome. Do the women in Armenia take off their clothes during the Feast of Battle? I don't know. He's the one who knows the habits of the women of every From country. From every point of view, Armenia has progressed far beyond Rome. There's always either a holiday or a war. <laughs> the women and wine are the best remedies for every evil. <laughs> ah! My shield must glitter more brightly than the rays of the sun when the sky is cloudless. It is my desire that if need be, in the midst of battle, it shall dazzle the eyes of my enemies. Now, now, let us console this poor sword that I hold in my hand. <laughs> I do not want it to give way to lamentation or suffer greatly if it must rest too long lazily at my side. Poor unfortunate. It dies of desire to make sausage meat of its enemies. Artotragos. 
Side of a mighty and lucky hero of glorious and royal countenance. That elephant, for example. Bell. Mm. No, Bell. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Why, Pollux Pilgrimpot and he says, How did you manage to break his leg with a single blow? <laughs> 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 ah, I do not desire to speak of these matters at this moment. But in Armenia, do you remember? 810 was the number of men I killed in triple. 980 in Shitalatronia. Forty in Tunisia, eighty Macedonians. Artotragus, how many is that? Seven thousand. <laughs> make way, make way for the Empress's service. Get out of the way, legionary. Lucius Maximus. By all the gods, your friends have been searching for you ever since you got back to celebrate your return. But you disappeared. I understand. The great general, the victorious hero, no longer likes the company of us simple mortals. I'm glad to see you, Jeta. And I you. The glory of your triumphs has spread everywhere. I only had a little luck. Praetorian, a horse for the Tribune. Hurry! Come with me. We'll enjoy ourselves. We'll celebrate your return in the manner it deserves. What evil have we done? Selena, get to this to us. Monsters! Monsters! Help! Leave us in the Help! They're trying to kill me! They're trying to kill me! Help! Help! Oh, Robert, Steve! Oh, they're trying to kill me! Go! Go back, all of you, to your houses. Do not go away. The soldiers will not harm you in any way if you do not act afraid of them. There is no law in Rome that obliges you to leave this land. Go back to your houses. You've been subjected to this treatment for too long now. The law is on your side, and in Rome the law is sovereign. Not even the emperor can break it. All is Celsus. What are you doing here and at this hour? I have chosen the hour and the place best adapted for opening the people's eyes. This is just one more abuse in the name of Messalina. Yeah, you see, they mistreat us because of the weakest. Get on with the evacuations. You are taking advantage of our friendship. No other man would still be alive if he had talked to me like that. These lands are being confiscated so they may be sold tomorrow to Vitellius, who will pay 3,000 sesterces for them into the purse of Messalina. Where do you think she gets the money, that great empress of yours, to keep the favor of the common people? Be careful, Celsus. I won't allow this kind of talk. Another word from you, and I shall have to have you arrested. All is Kelsus, Jeter. It's impossible. It's not right that two old friends like you should speak to each other in this way. It's unbearable to see a friend blind himself to the monstrous actions of Messalina. All Rome acclaims the Empress. Not all Rome, but only part of the plebeians who don't know the heavy price they will have to pay for the few hands full of grain that Messalina scatters with such a dramatic gesture. You don't know her. But I know Jeter. The rights of the Empire can't be constrained by one little community of miserable wretches. I'll speak to the Emperor. He is sure to listen to me. I want you to become friends again, just as the three of us were years ago. Am I right, Jada? It's difficult, Maximus, for a dead branch to sprout again. The friendship between Celsus and me is finished. I've learned from my experience as a soldier. If the greater part of the troops complain, there is something really wrong. But if it's only a few, you may punish them without worrying. The malcontents are almost always in the wrong. You said almost always. <laughs> This time, it's not only a few who complain of our Rome that is so utterly happy. Well, what have you decided? Can we go back home, or do we have to go away? And who are you? I'm one of those that you are quarreling over, and I want to tell you my opinion. Very well, let's hear it. If you look at me like that, I can't talk. Do you always stare at women like that? And why not? Do you consider yourself a woman by chance? <laughs> Come along, Kelsis. Let's go back to Rome. But please tell me, what's going to happen to us? Don't worry about it. You will remain in your village. What did he say? What's going to happen? Are they going to let us he stay said here? He said stay. Vinicius! Vinicius! Uh, uh, give me your armor, Master. It's hot today. 
What are you stammering about? Oh, who's stammering? It's just stumbling over my words, Master. Either you've broken something, or you've been robbing me more than usual. Oh, oh Master, how could you say, say such a thing about me? Why, would it be for the first time? Oh, yes, Master. You haven't forgotten me. How did you know I'd come back? You be dear, too. She told me that you were looking for me in the temple. So I hurried She told me you had been made a vestal. Would you still love me if the Vestal you once knew no longer existed? I would always love you. Would you still love me no matter what had happened during these years? Your kisses wipe out the past, no matter what happened. Then kiss me. Kiss me and love me. Because I need you. I shall. Very well. Hail, Lucius. Well, which of us have you chosen as a friend, me or Aulus Celsus? I only want to know how an honorable man like Celsus and an honorable man like you are not in agreement. Announce me to the Emperor. Well, I'll ask the Empress to see you. I cannot complain to the Empress of an act committed in her name. You don't know Messalina. Come with me. The perfume, Flavia. Divinity, I announce the Tribune Lucius Maximus. At your service, divine Messalina. It's not Caesar's wife who commands you. It's Valeria who begs you. Please. You, Valeria? It's impossible. For four years I have desired a woman who no longer exists. For you I'll always be Valeria. If only you knew how much I longed for you to come back. In the arms of Claudius. Don't you know that a Vestal has no choice in love? Especially when it's the will of the Empress. I could never live without you. <laughs> what was it you wanted to ask the Empress about? Is it about those lands that were confiscated? Yes. The Praetorian Guards are slaughtering people in your name. They want to burn and to destroy an entire village where poor people are living. <laughs> your friend Jetter is an honorable man. But as a soldier, he knows no gentleness. There are a great many honorable men who hate you. <laughs> 
I know whom you mean. That Aulus Celsus is not the only one. Caius Celius is against me, too. The aristocrats and half the Senate are against me. They're annoyed with me for trying to help the people. I had those lands confiscated because I wanted to give them to the soldiers of the Armenian Wars. I wanted to give them to your soldiers. That's why you must stay with me. You love Valeri. And now I make you love Messalina too. What is your name? You do not need a dagger to receive me. I am Silius. Forgive me for coming into your house in this way. But Rome is full of spies. No one feels secure anymore. Not even in his own bed. What is the matter, Silius? I must give you some bad news. All is Celsus. I have heard that you hope to have Lucius Maximus on your side in fighting against Messalina. I must disillusion you. Lucius Maximus has been named consul by Messalina. Is that possible? A man of his type. Jada. Jada has persuaded him. No, not Jada. Messalina. She manages to convince everybody. All men seem to be afraid of her. Her fascination overwhelms them. When a man like Lucius Maximus succumbs to the voluptuousness of a woman like Messalina, then one begins to have doubts of himself and lose faith in the things he has always believed in. Your honesty and your loyalty are of no use against Messalina. An act of force must be planned. These are my weapons, my speeches, my reports. I have never believed that justice can come from violence. When they cut your throat on the Gemonian stairs, your justice won't save you. No, but violence, never. I will be on your side, but my field of action will be the Senate and the Tribunal. Farewell, Celsus. You are an honorable man. All that you will do and say will be for the good of Rome. But be on guard against Messalina, if you want to see the day of freedom. Observe the events of the past. Listen, Arius, I'm speaking to you too. Making a comparison with those of today, you will arrive at the certainty that no matter what happens, nothing, nothing whatever can change the events in the great framework of history. What's the matter, Consul? Has Claudius Channer bore you? No, I'm worried about the Empress. The Empress? There is the Emperor whose business it is to rule. For the administration, there is a troop of professionals and the faithful Narcissus. The Empress is a woman. Think only of the woman. Don't leave her alone to be bored by the historical fantasies of an old man. Claudius is an excellent emperor, but a miserable husband. Go to him. Rome is destined to triumph, it is because history has made that decision. I know that my lectures are boring, but you are all paid to listen to them, so try to pretend at least a minimum of attention, instead of being bewitched by the sensuous movements of a dancer. This evening you've sent your twin, who doesn't help me? How could you doubt my love? and to our power. 
Burn down everything. Destroy all of these hovels. Lucius Maximus! Lucius Maximus! I insulted the person who came to tell me that you had betrayed Rome. Please forgive me, Sylvia. I couldn't believe you were telling the truth. What do you want here? I have no time to listen to sermons today. I don't intend to make a sermon, but just look at these people here. They don't believe in our gods, in which by now neither you nor I believe anymore, but in a god of justice and mercy. Is that why you want to drive them from their land? In the name of whom or what, Lucius Maximus, are you willing to befoul yourself with his infamy? In the name of a vile courtesan whose crimes have made our empress? Don't presume upon our friendship. Monster! Look at the results of your hand. Messalina can be proud of you. Take care, Celsus. You may threaten, but you will never stop me. I have enough proofs to accuse Messalina in the Senate. All of Rome will listen to my voice. A lust for power, a greed I'll for money, you a Don't kill him! Don't you know you mustn't harm a friend? God hates all violence. Don't do a thing that afterward you might have to regret for the rest of your life. You can thank her. She has saved your life. Miss Alina, why are such women ever born? They're the product of a period. In those times when the lives of men have no value, the Messalinas have their day. Tomorrow, the Senate will have to decide whether Rome will go on living or seal the beginning of its end. You're looking worried. What are you thinking about? About what happened this morning. Anyway, I know that you defended me. Alice Kelsus hates you. Oh, I'm not afraid of him. Tribunes always try to build up their power by running down the empire. Don't you know? It's not just the common people he wants to impress. He's going to denounce you before the Senate. He says he has proof of your mistakes. I am not afraid of him. Truth doesn't fear the lies of Aulus Chelsus. He's a very young man, and he's a senate. And the time in which the senate could govern is finished. The Republic is dead because Julius Caesar finished it. And the Republicans have all been killed at Philippi. <laughs> but let's not talk about that now. But you can't come in. Are you insane? Do you want to get me with? A good idea. What's going on out there? I told you you can't come in. Help, master. Stop making so much noise and help me with these things. Hold this and be careful not to break it. Do you hear? Good day. Will you explain what you are doing in my house? I'm a master. Now I you can't... be quiet. Be quiet. I'll explain myself. Well then, I'm waiting for an answer. They drove me out of my village and they burned down my house. So now I've come to stay with you. I didn't have anywhere else to go. Have you gone crazy? No. And your house is very nice, too. I think I like it here. Now you listen to me. Young woman, if this is a bad joke, it has gone on too long. But if it was Aulus Kelsus who sent you here, I'll... Aulus Kelsus knows nothing about it. He was terribly upset about what happened between you two the other day. He's a fine man, and he's very fond of you. And I'm fond of him, too. But that has nothing to do with it. It's you that we're discussing now. Oh, you mustn't worry about me. I'll arrange things somehow, and I won't bother you at all. I look after your clothes and help this poor old man take care of the household. I noticed some weeds about. I have a very definite suspicion that sometimes he robs you. Oh, I, master, I swear by don't all Don't swear God. because it's a sin. Oh. It doesn't matter anyhow. Your oath don't count. Will you tell me what I have done to bring down a catastrophe like this upon my head? Why, you burn my house down. May the gods help me. Where are you going? Oh, I stumbled. Thank <laughs> you. 
Stand back. Stand back. Get out of the way. Get back. Keep calm, everybody. Easy, easy. Stand back. Stop pushing. Had his throat cut. Whoever did it must have fought it out with him to the death. It might be a suicide. A senator, or as Kelsus, has committed suicide. He committed suicide. Stand back. Stand back. Silence. Silence. Back. Stop pushing. Quickly, quickly. Let's go. Stand back. The Senator Aulis Kelsus has committed suicide. He was murdered by you. He was the only honest one. God will punish you. Stand back there. Are you preparing to celebrate Aulis Kelsus' death? Leave me. Are you mad? Not anymore. I was mad before. Mad to believe you. Mad to silence my conscience. You have had Aulis Kelsus murdered. Now I know why you were so calm when I came and warned you against him. I didn't raise you up to this position to have you insult me. On the contrary, I wanted you at my side to defend me. I have so many enemies here in Rome, especially here in the palace. Who killed Kelsus? Look into my eyes. Would you believe me if I told you that he took his own life? Kelsus was going to speak against you in the Senate. somebody else who saw him. Somebody who you respect. Lucius Jetta. He is your friend and he was his friend. Ask him how Aulus Chelsus died. Come back when you've spoken to Jet. Well, I was frightened. I was afraid Miss Alina had put you in prison. Why did you think so? I saw you go out, and there was hatred and vengeance in your face. Alice Kelsus committed suicide. Messalina had nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with it? When you went to the palace, I was afraid of what might happen to you. And I prayed to God to help you conduct yourself as a just man and a merciful one. Because your anger frightened me and instead Be quiet, you... you can't understand. Oh, yes, I understand all too well. All your indignation died away in the arms of the Empress. She gave you a smile and you fell Be down quiet. on your feet. You profaned the memory of Olus Kelsus in an embrace. With your cowardice, you betrayed the... Be quiet, I, I say! Made... Oh. Did I hurt you? Forgive me. It's you who must forgive me. I talk too much and say things that I shouldn't even think of. Now go along to bed. I have to stay alone. Send for me. I hope I didn't wake you. Those who fear the vengeance of the dead don't sleep. I thought you were a courageous man. Look at my hands. 
They are burning as if I were holding them over a flame. It's the blood of a friend. These hands are precious to my life. You and I share the same secret and the same blood. You and I need each other. If Lucius Maximus asks you how Aulus Chelsus died, tell him Aulus Chelsus took his own life. Hmm? And if he doesn't believe me? <laughs> He'll believe you. He has faith in you. He must have it in me. Miss Alina, you know that I, I've always loved you. I have always obeyed your every wish. Please, stop. Stop yourself now while there's still time. <laughs> Why should I stop myself now? Now that I know that you love me. Now that a new life starts for us. Easy. Easy. Lower it. That's right, let's go. There we'll construct a magnificent stairway, and here we'll build a charming fish yeah. pond, and over there we'll plant the grove of trees. The stone quarry is nearby. You'll have the villa of a satrap, <laughs> and it'll cost you very little. If the land hadn't cost a hundred times its true value. The empress always gets high prices. Oh, who has mentioned Messalina? You see where the land is going that was supposed to be given to us veterans. You believe that story? Maximus said the lands were going to be turned over to us. They're all alike, and Lucius Maximus more than any. What do you have to say, Vibulanus? Ah, stop your chat. Didn't Lucius Maximus desert you too? You keep your nose in your own business. How stupid animals are. Just look at that pigeon. Instead of flying away, it prefers to stay and be a prisoner in a house so it will be sure of getting fed every day. Uh. Don't you have anything else to do but water me like a flower bed? Oh, what did you do about a few little drops of water? Why did you build the fountain if you're so afraid of getting wet? Jeta, I'm glad to see you. What's the matter? Are you ill? No, it's nothing. I have to speak with you, Lucius Maximus. I ordered all of to be killed. What are you saying? No, that's nothing. Under my command, violence has been committed, and I allowed it. I put myself against everyone, disregarding every principle. Miss Elena. She stunned me with her beauty. She destroyed my honor with her lasciviousness. You should take care of your life. I don't need anything. I only need your pardon. <laughs> The poison I have taken is already burning my life out. Listen, Lucius. Messalina wanted me to convince you that the Aulus Celsus had committed suicide. I hope you will forgive me. And when they speak badly about Jada, at least one person will know that I knew I was wrong. The gods have been generous, allowing me to see you and speak with you. I implore you, my lord tribune. Messalina doesn't want to see anyone. She'll punish me. I have brought her please, present. please. Please, that's the palace entrance. I implore she can't you. Refuse. You mustn't go she in. Must see it. Please, please. Let him go. Forgive me, Lucius Maximus, if I was obliged to borrow from our mutual enemy such an uncivil system. I know why you have come to the palace, and I also know what you have brought Messalina. I, too, had great respect for Lucius Jato. She must see the man she drove to suicide. You would probably never leave here alive after showing her that corpse. Your hands are clean, Lucius Maximus. You're a soldier, and Rome needs you now more than ever. Your legionaries are scattered. Gather them together and see that they are held in readiness. 
Go, Lucius Maximus, and do not hesitate. You know that what I am asking you is for the good of Claudius and the Empire. I will speak to Messalina in your place. Forgive me, august lady, if I have dared to disturb you. But the sight I have to show you is worth a few seconds of your precious time. I never appreciated irony. What is it you want? Here, august lady, history repeats itself. <laughs> History repeats itself, even if the signs are different. Do you remember one morning you called me to look at a corpse? It was the sign that Messalina was born. Now the body of Lucius Jata, who because of you has committed suicide, could mean that your reign, August Lady, is about to end. How dare you! I'll make you pay dearly for those words. No, Messalina, you don't even believe that yourself. Do you know who brought this corpse here? Lucius Maximus. It's not true. I don't believe you. Yes, he. He asked me to tell you that this is a gift worthy of you. He said that women like you, Messalina, don't deserve to live or be loved, and that you will be obliged to live out the rest of your days surrounded by hatred and scorn. He said that every memory he has of you makes him ashamed. He regrets not having fallen in battle like a soldier. You've said enough, Narcissus. You will know my vengeance for this, and that of Caesar. You cannot allow me to be insulted in this way. What do you want me to do? Kill Narcissus? Yes. Do you think that will settle everything? You must do something. You must defend yourself. There is only one way to handle this. However, I must always be certain of having you at what my do you want side. Me to do? Give up all intrigues. Leave behind you all your crimes, hatreds, conspiracies, and treachery. You want to give up your throne and the empire? Of what use is this power, Miss Alina? Are you able to grasp with your hand, water, or the air that you breathe? It's something that you seek after continually and which always eludes you. But you cannot give up like this. Now that Jetter is dead, the Praetorian Guards will be without a leader. It'll be easy for the nobility to win them over. You must do something. I should have the strength to abandon everything and return to the enjoyment of the spectacle of the sun as it rises behind a hill or a flower as it blooms. Down in Capri, there is the villa which was left by Tiberius. Perhaps there we could find comfort for the torments of our spirits. Listen to me, Miss Alina. Why won't you come with me to Capri? <laughs> You're mad, Caesar. But I won't follow you in your madness. Caesar's wife bring with her this time? What new gift? This time, my gift is Rome. You and I together can obtain the support of all the people. And Claudius? To Capri, or to the country. No, Messalina. Exiles are dangerous. They can reawaken nostalgia, give birth to regret, raise hopes and desires for restorations. Well then, what do you want me to do with him? dead are less dangerous. If Claudius was killed, the people would revolt. That is what must happen. His death will become the symbol of our rebellion. We perform an act of justice. We don't plot to conquer the world. It's too dangerous. Wait. There must be another solution. Claudius must die. Only this way will I unite my forces with yours. When you have decided, light the great brazier on the terrace of your apartment. That will be the signal I will expect. At last, we will march ahead together, as I have always desired. He wouldn't be able to do without me now. We've been keeping his house in order, you understand. 
He's never had things kept in such good condition. His weapons are shiny and his servants have stopped robbing him. You know, I'm so happy that the master sent for you, Vibrilinus. Sometimes I don't understand him, but you've been a friend of his for so many years, and with you, maybe the master... I'd like would... to know why you always insist on calling him master. You're not his slave. Listen, all men are divided up into masters and husbands. And I'm afraid Lucius Maximus will always be only a master to me. Why should he be? You're a little trying, but taking everything into consideration, you're not so bad. Thank you. But have you ever seen Messalina? She's the kind of woman men like, though you couldn't persuade me to change places with her for all the gold in the world. Forget about Messalina. That was an ugly business, but now it's over and done with. And then, it's up to you to make him forget it. Out there, no one can pass here. You can't go in there. But it's my own house. This is the house of the consul, Lucius Maximus. Well, it's all the same. Nothing's happened to him. Nothing up to now. Come back here. Don't do anything foolish. An official visit. She's even brought along an escort. Messaline, I might have known it. Naturally, she couldn't leave him in peace. He'll end up by falling for her tricks again. Let's hope not. Lucius, please come back with me. Please don't leave me alone now. I'll do something desperate. Lucius, you're the only person who can help me. It's not possible. It's no longer possible. I have always loved you. But it's a sin I hope will be forgiven me. Now I cannot have pity. Isn't it enough for you that I come here to drag myself at your feet like the lowest of Sapporo women? Even there, the women are better than you. Remember, I'm still Caesar's wife. Well, then, have me killed. Want us to arrest him? Kill him too? No, tell your men to turn back. I think it might be wiser if you would. From Lucius Maximus, isn't it enough that you've ruined his life? How dare you speak to me like that? Who are you and what are you to him? I don't know as yet, but I know that I love him more than I've ever loved anyone else. I would gladly give my life for him. I'll give you the opportunity to satisfy your desires sooner than you think. Arrest this stupid little girl. Help! Let me go! Let me go! Oh. <laughs> safety. Ah, oh, what a splendid gallop we had. I've never had such a wonderful horseback ride in all my life. You can't forget her, can you? It's true, she's very beautiful. Not like me. But there's no telling how much vermilion from Tyrus and Oriental tints help make her beautiful. On the other hand, if I jump into a fountain, I come out just the same. <laughs> You're right, Sylvia. You have much more than she does. Maybe I have. But she's the one you're in love with. Do you think that's nothing? For a woman in love, it's everything. Sylvia, you don't know what you're saying. I don't love Messalina now. You're a sweet child, capricious and often trying, but more than anything else, a child. Oh, Maximus, I'm so tired of everyone always calling me a child. I'm 17 years old. And I'm in love with you. But life is not as simple as that. You can't solve everything with a couple of words and your tender girlish sentimentality. Yes, you can. Things must be solved that way, because that's the only right way. Listen to me a moment, only a moment. My people are about to leave for Mount Circes. We're going to board ship there and go far away from this terrible city that's so corrupt. You can come with us. We'll be together and we'll be happy always. Happy, happy. No, Sylvia, I can't leave Rome now. Still more intrigues, perhaps more vengeance and bloodshed. How can I marry a man who thinks of nothing else but killing people? But who said anything about getting married? I did. Why, what did you expect? That I'd fall in love with a man without thinking of marrying him? But I'm an unlucky girl, if you want to know the truth of it. And you, you're a soldier. A girl should never trust a soldier. My grandfather always said so. He was absolutely right. Never trust a soldier, never trust me, and never trust anyone who only thinks of killing. Now wait for me here. Very well. Glaucus! Marcius, Maximus has arrived. Maximus. Oh, I didn't expect you to come today. It must have been the gods who sent you. But Antius has brought the weapons and he wants to talk to you about the horses. 
And who is that bewitching them? A little Christian cousin of mine. Uh, I'm going to entrust her to you. Take her back to her own people. Good. You come with me. We must warn all the others to hold themselves in readiness. Events may come to a crisis from one day to the next. I want to stay with you. I can help you. No, little one. You stay here. Difficult times lie ahead of us. Farewell. Take this to Valeria Messalina. During my absence, Rome is entrusted to your care. Be on your guard to see that the state and the lives of its citizens are respected. We shall not rest, Caesar. However, Rome shall anxiously await your return. Go to Messalina Narcissus. Talk to her. Ask her forgiveness and try to convince her of the futility of her plans. Perhaps we might still be able to find happiness together. is leaving Divine Messalina. He's going to Achille with a small escort to inspect the work upon the aqueduct. Are you ready? I'm taking the most trusted Praetorian guards. We'll take his retinue by surprise at the waterfall. Before evening, it'll be all over. Here. Your men will fight better with this. For me, there could be no greater reward than the joy of gaining your favor. You'll have that too, Frontes. I've already asked that you be appointed leader of the guard. And may fortune be with you. Where are you going? I'm going back to my mistress. Tell me, who ordered that brazier to be lighted? I don't know anything. You give me too much importance. I'm just a humble maidservant. I don't know anything. You're a liar. And you're tricky. What's that you're hiding behind your back? Oh! What are you doing? Curse you! Speak! No! Oh! Speak! Speak! Where were you coming from? It was a message from Messalina, wasn't it? Who wrote it? Who gave it to you? The brazier, the sudden departure of Fonteus' Praetorian guards. What do you know? No! Enough! You were coming from Caius Silius' house, weren't you? Speak! No! They're going to attack Claudius at the river. Lucius Maximus must be warned at once. What's the matter? We're being attacked. Hurry! Everyone to the waterfall! Praetorians, forward! Oh! 
Let me see who they are. The Praetorian. They put me on the throne and now they've come to put me to death. Ah, uh, how true. To be contradictory is quite characteristic of human nature. Read on. I was taking a stroll along the Via Sacra thinking that I... Forward! in time, Claudius. We've won. You are safe. Hey, you, Clotus. Quickly, put on the uniform of one of those Praetorians and race to Rome to Silius' house. You will say that you are bringing an important message. Tell them it was Fonteius who sent you. Very well. What are you doing? Have confidence in me once more, divine Claudius. I thank you, Lucius Maximus. I owe you my life and the Empire. We will return to Rome. This day will see much before it is finished. It was a short but violent battle. Claudius offered his throat without fear to the sword that struck him. And he did not suffer. Antaeus stayed on to run down the last of the survivors. No one will ever know the origin of this massacre. Rome is ours, divine Messalina. From this moment, a new era will open up for Rome, and the fame of Julius Caesar will be eclipsed. <laughs> Friends, let us drink to the health of Imperial Rome and to your.
your triumph, Messalina. To the nobility. At last we have an emperor who is young and bitter. To the new emperor. <laughs> always imagined the day of our triumph like this, Messalina. And now, thanks to us, the aristocrats and the people will march together for the first time in the history of Rome. For a drink to the prosperity of Rome, I give you the best wine in the empire. Caius Silius! Caius Silius! We were massacred at Achilia! Pontius is dead, and Claudius is alive! Alive! Leave the hall and go to your rooms. Keep calm. Go and get your arms. Don't stand there like statues. Prepare yourselves to resist an attack. Praetorians, range yourselves at all the entrances and allow no one to come in. You, run down to the main gate, see that the guards resist to the last man, and go instantly. Messalina. Here we are not on the field of battle, where he who kills is a hero. Here it's the tyrant who kills the tyrant. So it will always be, as long as in Rome there's an emperor. It's finished, Lucius Maximus. It is finished for me, who am dying. And also for all of you who must go on living. <sighs> What are you waiting for? Kill me. You must die as you have lived. No! No, Narcissus. My death is your responsibility. You must kill me yourself. I'm not going to help you do it. Come on. Take your vengeance. Don't kill her! I loved only you. <laughs> she had to die because Rome must live.
At this price, it would be better for Rome to die! Now I have nothing else to ask for. 